find anything good there or what? Uh, perusing and perusing and perusing, looking. Some nice, nice uh, team ups there. Yeah, I've already hit up some. Red Skull cover, man. Love the Red Skull. One That's of, nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Look at that. The Monstrous Crusher. So these are all tales of suspense, eh? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a good run. Here's a key man, first Modoc. Yeah. First Modoc. Yeah, mental organism organism designed only for killing. There he is at the bottom corner there. What's the price on it? Hundred dollars VF minus copy. Nice, nice higher not grade. Bad, not bad. That's a nice it's copy. The Hagenland stuff, right? Yeah. What do you got there? Anything good? Well, well, you just pop out stuff like this, and you see uh, Daredevil and Black Widow. Now, people who don't know, this is the origin of Moon Dragon. Got it. So it's a good book. I mean, they got twenty-five bucks on it. It's a little high if you can get it for under twenty bucks for a VF near mint looking copy, that's a good buy. For sure, yeah. 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 <laughs> the Toronto Comic Book Show. Yeah. We are always there, but a new location. Yeah. That's right. It was, uh, I guess this is a lot bigger because, uh, you know, there's a lot more. This show is getting more and more popular, so they needed a bigger venue. Bigger venue. They needed to be able to fit more vendors in there. So that's why it's at the Monte Casino Resort and Hotel. Yeah. And it was really like a complex. I mean, we had no problem getting there, but when we actually got there, it was funny. It was like a maze. Yeah. We're yeah. going backwards and forwards. We went to the reception. We went to the wrong floor. Yeah. And finally, some some cleaning person finally I guess took pity on us and, and like let us almost by the hand downstairs yeah, suffice to say it took a while to to get there it would have been helpful for like uh, for somebody like uh, uh, Rob to like put some signage or let somebody <laughs> right, know yeah. you know like I mean these guys we're having a convention here if guys come looking for them like you know direct yeah. them the right way I mean that's my only complaint about the show yep. great new location more vendors the usual good stuff yeah uh, yeah more girls too because apparently the washrooms are really clean as opposed to the old hotel. Yeah, mm -hmm. you kind of had to, uh, like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. But we also, we also got some good scores. I know I picked a couple things, not comic books so much, but I did pick up some stuff while yeah. there. You you picked up some decent stuff. Yeah, we're oh, going to yeah. be showcasing yeah. a mixed bag yeah. here. Like, I, not the usual stuff. We got some gold key. We got some, mm -hmm. some Atlas Seaboard, some uh, Image, and some awesome entertainment comics. So, cool. not the usual stuff for me. Okay, so Jose, you're going to start, right? This is you're showing two books, right? Yeah, two books. These are like you know, I've been kind of on a autopilot there when it comes to the good girl art, the good girl yeah. covers, and you know, when you can't afford the vintage stuff, and sometimes you can't. I mean. Mm -hmm. Go yeah. for the new stuff. I mean, there's going to be stuff, lots of yeah. stuff over the last 25 years. So, yeah. and these are a couple of cookies, $5 books. So, yeah. the first one here is uh, Evangeline, issue number one. It's uh, from March of 99. These are going to be two 90s titles. What was the common theme back then? Multiple variant covers. Like, I think at least I saw more than a dozen covers yeah. for this number one issue here. This apparently is the cover version 1D is in dog, where it's the Lee Field and Stinsman variant, if you can believe it. Okay, mm -hmm. so hot cover five bucks it's got a little uh color break on the top uh black bar there so obviously you're gonna have to take that into account but for a five dollar comic book can't go wrong you can't yeah. go wrong i mean it's a cool leaf field cover she's sexy she's hot it, it might have a couple other pimples in the sense that the white cover might be hiding some a couple other sins but it's good to cool. look at it's cool book for yeah. five dollars you know two dollar fifty cover price you know this is from 99 so this is like a book that's going on 20 years old i mean i, I wanted to call it the new comic book segment but yeah. 20 years well, old it's not that new well 20 years in the comic book industry is like nothing no nothing. but yeah mm -hmm. in the sense that the, most vendors would consider yeah. this a modern book and oh, treat it sure. as such oh, so yeah. underneath I I there under door number two we have our other second uh, 90s title here this is lady supreme okay. number one from image comics this is from may of 19 1996. Cool. So uh, again, Terry Moore cover, uh, written and uh, covered by Terry Moore from uh, Strangers in Paradise fame. Uh, note to collectors, again, the number one issue actually was released with several uh, different color variants to the logo and the background yeah. on this issue. 
of course, what can I say wow. about it? It's a typical headlights cover, what I would call it, stylistically. Mm -hmm. uh, Terry Moore always reminded me, like, of the influence of somebody like Patrick Nagel, yeah. uh, you know, from the, he famously for the Duran 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 cover. cover. Yeah. Look at the face there. I mean, stylistically, it's almost like you want to say uh, Nagel's been dead a long time, but he's rolling his grave because he wants his DNA style back, man. <laughs> Terry Moore, sure. you should be paying him royalties, man. Like I said, it's like, got some similarities. Yeah. Uh, some similarities. I mean, just flash the, Le the Leo yeah. cover again. I mean, yeah, but it's again, it's a cool cover. It looks, it doesn't have any blemishes. Oh, actually, it's got a couple of small, tiny little color yeah. breaks, I think, along the spine where these staples yeah. are but other than that again you know little pimple like that yeah two dollar yeah, fifty yeah. cover price again 20 year old book five dollars why not tell you the truth i didn't know nagel had passed away until you told me oh he's been dead for a long time really? yeah no. yeah anyways those are two fantastic books to start off with uh two modern books not going to cost books. you an arm and a leg good and, girls and it's not always about the old stuff some of the newer stuff's cool too oh yeah definitely Okay, next up we got Eagle Eyed Oog, and he's taking us back in time on this one with a real nice vintage. Uh, is that adventure comics or is it weird adventure it's comics? It's weird comics. Weird adventure because but, it's featuring the Spectre. Ah. Well, it's, but it's called Adventure, adventure. Four, Three Seven. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the whole thing about this is yes, it's the Spectre run. I've been trying when I see him at a good price and a good condition to pick him up mm -hmm. because. When I, I've seen other vendors carry these for the price that they're worth mm -hmm. easily or very close to it versus what I paid here. Ten bucks. Ten bucks Canadian or seven fifty US. Realm's got it at twenty four seventy five. I've seen vendors have this mm -hmm. for twenty, twenty five bucks in their cheapy bins. Yeah. In this grade about a find a very mm -hmm. fine seven point So it's a solid higher yeah. higher mid grade kind of copy, so, so it's very respectable for yeah, condition. Respectable. Ten really bucks? Yeah. For ten bucks. Clean. For ten bucks. How old this is vintage what were you talking here? Seventies, Mike? This is twenty five. Seventy five. Seventy five. Yeah, 75. Jim Apparel art. Yeah, I was gonna say and, Mr. Apparel. Yeah. And it's got that um, the writer Michael uh, Fleischer, we've already mentioned him before in an earlier episode. Mm -hmm. We've already talked about Spectre. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I figure the apparel work is, uh, is on the title head. Uh, it's got an Aquaman thriller, and apparel was known to be doing the Aquaman sure. uh, yeah. the, oh, yeah, the, yeah. the issues back mm -hmm. then. Sure. It's a very nice atmospheric cover too. Like, wow, that that you could put that on a ghost kind of cover, say, say same thing. and it's, it would not stand yeah, out in the sense that it mm -hmm. just fits right in. It looks uh, like a ghost cover. Yeah, it does. From, from DC's Ghost Line. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's beauty, and I, I want all ten books. This is my fourth one. Oh, the there biggie you go. is the uh, 431, which I already got out of the way, and that's the very like first of one, the it's twice as much as the rest of the because run. it's the first of the run on yeah. the on the adventure title that's cool. why yeah fantastic book mike thanks for bringing it in oh is there another one under there you uh, just no, wanted to cool now. cool thanks ah uh, you know i absolutely love those gold keys and they're starting to get more love in the comic community than they used to that's well, I have, with this purchase, uh, I've actually doubled my gold key collection in my stash, but that's not saying anything because I only <laughs> own one, one title, and that was that Dr. Sola that I got that's CGC. Right. <laughs> but I'm playing in Paulie's sandbox. He really likes those gold keys. This is Jet Dream number one. Mm -hmm. It's a one shot from June of 68. Yeah. Now, the James Bond movies back then inspired an espionage explosion in comic books in the mid 60s. Yeah. Black Widow, The Russian Spy, Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., and, yes, boys and girls, Jet, Jet Dream, Dream and her stunt girl, Counter Spies. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Now, of course, I mean, I feel slightly foolish saying this, the comic was obviously influenced by Pussy Galore and her all-female flying circus from the James Bond movie Goldfinger. Oh, for sure. My, my favorite, favorite, my favorite, favorite Bond movie of all time, Sean favorite. Connery. I guess, Paulie, what do you have a favorite Bond? My, 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 well, my favorite, well, again, for every, every, every single Bond, I have a favorite, except for one, of course. Uh, for um no your all time all favorite. Time, all time favorite. Sorry, dude, it's Moonraker. Uh, Moonraker. Yeah, you're you're a Roger Moore cat. I cannot say one. I'm staying Bond classic and Connery. It's yeah. gonna be it's Do Connery Doc. Connery for me too. I'm yeah, sorry. Goldfinger. Yeah. Sorry, it's, man, it's Moonraker. Although I will say Daniel Craig and Casino Royale, it's almost a perfect movie. Oh yeah. Yeah. Anyway, getting back to the book. So, who was a Jet Dream? Well, she is the leader of these cool Tarantino-esque female group of counter spies. There's her, and then the team consists of Petite. She's a connoisseur of perfumes and fine wine. There's Marlena, the tough one with a mind as sharp as a whip. There's Tingling, the mm -hmm. South Seas beauty, and wait for it, my personal favorite, 
cookie jar. Cool. Highly <laughs> skilled athletically. And when the action's over, she's a seductress. Oh, yeah. 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 Like I said, the first appearance of this very Tarantino-esque, beyond cool, all-girl espionage team is in this somewhat obscure gold key title, The Man from Uncle, issue number seven from July of 66. Very nice. Yeah. The, uh, the, the Jet Dream stories were four-page backups starting from issue number seven, running through the last issue in the series, number 22, although issues 21 and 22 were reprint of earlier issues. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a little known fact that the creator of both James Bond and the man from Uncle Napoleon Solo was, of course, none other than Ian Fleming. Mm -hmm. The film studio told him to distance himself from the TV show because the Bond movies were on a cash roll. Now, one last bit of cool trivia, boys and girls. Ian Fleming had an amazing and far-reaching imagination. I just recently found out that he borrowed heavily from the famous spy of the Elizabethan era, John Dee. Hmm. Now, apparently, he signed all of his coded correspondence to Elizabeth I, 007 and get this she signed hers m i didn't no know that way. it's a small world indeed oh cool wow. now jet tree number one can be had for pretty cheap and it's the kind of type of book that can attract some niche demand with just a little market awareness sure of yeah. course a solid high mid-grade copy about a fine very fine seven snatch for 15 dollars that's a fiver and a tenner, boys and girls. Mm -hmm. 48th over street price breaks for this bargain book of the con for this book are 9 21 33 and $45 US in the 6, 8, 99.2 grade splits. So therefore, a 7.0 copy would be about 30 bucks divided by 2, 15 US. I picked it for 15 Canadian. I got it for several bucks under guide. It's my bargain book of the con. Mm, nice, little, nice little tidbit for your collection, and it's not going to cost you a fortune. Nothing Definitely. wrong with that. Love the cover, man. No high in those eight. This is Frugal McDougal. <laughs> <laughs> Great book, Jose. Thanks for bringing it in. Hoy hoy. Okay, so this is my first acquisition of the con. Hey, this is not a comic book. <laughs> You're right, it's not. It's a original signature, uh, John Boyega, um, Force Awakens. I guess you'd call that just like a promo card uh, that came out when the movie was first released. A uh, very nice signature, and... Um, wasn't really looking for John Boyega, but I got a good deal on it. He gave me this for, uh, I think, 40 bucks, so hell. Yeah, I you were chatting him up for a while. There. Yeah, he, yeah. He was, he was busy. He was busy, and I was looking at two two different signatures. I'll show you the second one later. This was the less expensive of the two, but I really like it. And as you know, I'm a Star Wars fan. When I can get Star Wars original uh, signatures at a reasonable price, I'm going to pick them up and I get the, you know, I got the little certificate of authenticity on the back of it, so I know it's real. Plus, this guy's a very reputable dealer. He de deals in some very, very expensive si uh, signatures. So, yeah, I was comfortable with it. Not something I was really looking for, but I'm very happy to find it. Yeah, I'm jealous of uh, some of the ones he had on the table there, and mm -hmm. uh, we'll see what happens. As Stan Lee would Maybe say, enough said. said. Enough said. <laughs> Okay, next up we got Big Mike, and he's got a real nice copy of uh, All Star Comics number sixty-seven. Seven. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. Again, uh, what can I say? It's got Power Girl on the cover, so I knew this would ignite some fuel under the uh, put put a match to some fuel there. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I always say, man, you cannot go wrong. As you put Power Girl on the cover, there she's fighting not so little green men with, among others, Wildcat. And looks like the Golden Age Flash, and is that the All-Star Kid? Anyway, mm -hmm. it's a cool battle cover is what we say here. And yeah. looks to be a very good condition book, which, you know what? You're yeah. doing the run, you're going to get all from 58 to whatever, 70, whatever the well, end of the know, run. I'm not even sure, but, you know, it looks not, like you're doing a run. It's not, it's not top on my priority, but what it is is that I, I do have some notes, and it's like, okay, that price for about an 8.0? Mm-hmm. It's a higher-grade copy, that's for sure. That's for $10. sure. $10. Mm -hmm. Which is 750 US. The realm's got a 35. Even if you cut that in half, it's still a bargain. Come on. It yeah. is for a book that's all going almost on 40 years. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty we're good. We're talking about August 1977 here. Yeah. And I, again, the cover is Al uh, Milgrom. And you might know him from some of the books we featured, like Firestarter and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the guy's of done lots of DC. stuff. He's a name. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, uh, yeah, why not? I mean, it's just like, I, yeah, I got... I well, got it looks like between co bucks, between not? cover appeal, good battle cover, price. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it basically ends up to you saying, well, I got to buy it. Pretty damn close to a no-brainer to me. Yeah. Cool, Mike. Nice book. Nice. 
You know, I do like it when we take a break from doing uh, Marvel and DC books. I mean, we all collect Marvel and DC, but there's a whole world of other uh, printers out there that going back, you know, a century that have produced some really cool books. And we got a we got a publisher here we don't see a whole lot of, do we? No, nope, uh, this is the Scorpion issue number one from February 1975. And of course, what's got a key factor? It's obviously the first appearance of the Scorpion. Scorpion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Atlas Seaboard is the term comic book historians and collectors used to refer to the 1970s line of comic published as Atlas Comics by American company Seaboard Periodicals to differentiate them from the 1950s Atlas Comics, which were the predecessor or precursor of Marvel Comics. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, it was created by Marvel Comics founder Martin Goodman in June of 1974. Atlas Seaboard offered some of the highest rates in the comic industry, plus return of artwork to artists and author rights to original character creations. These relatively luxurious conditions attracted such top names to the company as Neil Adams, Steve Ditko, Russ Heath, John Severin, Alex Toth, and Wally Wood, as well as up and coming talents such as the cover artist here, Howard Chaikin, nice. of super cool Uber Bondage cover. Mm -hmm. And that is the cover appeal for me. Howard Chaikin, of course, you recognize, we're getting the Star Wars fact again, he did the cover for Star Wars number one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the Scorpion ran only three issues. Uh, it, this is cover dated from February to July of 75. The first issue was both written and drawn by creator uh, Chaikin. Now, um, basically, uh, citing lack of control over his creation, Chaikin quit after the second issue. Hmm. Uh, the protagonist, of course, for the first two issues was an immortal adventurer in the 1930s whose then current identity was Moro Frost. In the third and final issue of the series, the Scorpion is a present day superhero named David Harper. Now, this revamp played off an introductory sequence in the first issue that indicated that the Scorpion changes identity every few years allowing this to be the same man. Hmm. Now, a total of 23 comic titles and five comic magazines were published by Atlas before the company folded in late 1975. No title lasted more than four issues. Interestingly, of the characters created, Howard Chaikin's Scorpion would inspire his Dominic Fortune character adventure over at Marvel Comics a few years later. Mm -hmm. This is a nice, tight, high grade, I would say VF near midnight 0.0 copy, Gonna be a tough black cover i mean this yeah. is from february 75 i mean this thing is around 40 years old you yeah. know yeah, so yeah. i mean it's getting there so i was looking for it i picked it up for 25 bucks canadian 20 dollars us yeah 40th over street price breaks for this book are 15 22 and 28 dollars us in the 899.2 grade splits 22 dollars us 25 dollars canadian i'm right there as far mm -hmm. as guide Sweet. Yeah, very nice. It's interesting that, uh, as you said, the longest any title ran was four issues. I wonder if that's by design or just for lack of sales. I think basically they gave that, I wouldn't say gave away the farm, but who would have thought Atlas Seaboard, a character rights pioneer? Yeah. I yeah. mean, maybe, like I said, it wasn't put them in a financially feasible position yeah, if you're giving yeah. away basically creator rights yeah. or returning the artwork, which could be another source of revenue to the artist. I mean, yeah. These kind of things were not done by all by the Pagan people publishers. Oh, for sure, for sure. It, it, it is a beautiful cover, Jose. One of the oh, nicest cool. one I've seen in a while. A lovely 70s bondage cover for me. Thumbs up on this pickup. Oh, thumbs up for sure. The collector's editions, these are the, this is one of the big ones yeah. to get. I mean, me personally, I'm looking for that Mike Grell, the Legion of Superheroes with... Uh, yeah, yeah. But, but I would like to pick this up at some point. Oh, yeah. What's that there, 7.5? Yeah, 7.5, which is a solid great for this Silver Age book from 68. Of course, this is the first Mary Jane on the cover wearing her shiny metallic dress, dancing the night away at a club that's a front for the Kingpin, nice. known, known as the Brainwasher. And it's a solid book. At 120 bucks, that's a good yeah, price. Tales yeah, of Suspense, yeah. the uh, anthology featuring Iron Man. Number 56, right? Yeah, I believe it's a, probably an early appearance, if not a first appearance, of the Uncanny Unicorn there. Yeah. yeah. Nice battle cover there, 60 bucks. What, what else you got in there? Yeah. Uh, and then he, when Captain America began in the title there, a uh, couple of f few issues earlier than that. Yeah. Yeah. Good copies, VGs. Wow, multiple copies all around the VG level. First appearance of Deadpool. Yeah, Deadpool, double signed. Very, double, oh, it's double signed, yeah. Did he cut you a deal at all, or? 
1700. 17? That's not bad, not bad. Well, I think there's one sold for 17 in the US. One sold for 17 in the US. Yeah. US dollar. Oh, very nice, nice. Next up, we got Big Mike with a number one issue of a book, to tell you the truth, I've never even heard of before. <laughs> Ditto. I've never seen this before. Also, I, I was standing beside the, the big dude that works at the Hagenland. I pulled it out and I said, oh, look, it's what everyone called me in grade school. How about that? <laughs> and, uh, you know, he had a, we had a chuckle and stuff like this. But there's a lot of wiki in, uh, in, uh, information about this. And there's a bit of a tie in that the last book that Jose just showed only lasted three uh, three books. This only lasted two. Hmm. There, there was some... Uh, 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 interviews with guys who worked with uh, some of the older um, um, uh, artists uh, not the artists but writers the, uh, uh, producers or whatever publisher uh, publisher mm -hmm. the day who said oh, I hated this you, you were painting hippies in a good light and stuff like this he's actually in a, a good mannequin light. that comes to life and wait a minute like the, the title there says here is the real life scene of the dangers in hippie, hippie land, land. Yeah. Ooh, but, but they paint, scary but they paint hippies in a good light in this and that's, they do? that's a no no in the 1960s when is this from cover dated October when oh yeah let's take a look here okay so brother the power the geek uh 1968 so this hmm. is this is the heyday this is just before 50 the summer. years old this power the, power <laughs> this yeah. is the year after the summer of love i think see, about yeah. it right so, uh -huh. Mm -hmm. So it's created by Joe Simon, and I, I think he did the writing too. And he got mm, some, one half of he Simon of Kirby. His, he got one of his friends to do some of the artwork. Mm -hmm. who's from um, uh, an independent um, uh, comic book. I'm not sure. It wouldn't be any ones that you guys would know. And I, I, there's all kinds of uh, information. So I didn't bring a lot with me. I love but, the cover, though, man. You gotta say, man, that's cool. a nice, cool cover. Guys went to motorcycles. Number one issue. Number one issue. It's gonna you be. Know, uh, the tough top of the cover is going to be tough man and it's mm -hmm. black yeah i mean it's got its issues i gave it about a 6.0 solid good book for a 50 year old book 25 us uh, for it so well, 15 bucks canadian you and paid 15 equal two yeah. bagger on the realm for a fiver and a tenner it looks yeah. like yeah. yeah that's that's damn good yeah so you know and it was just seemed fun it's like hey i've never seen this before it's a number one it's old mm-hmm this book will add interest to your collection man like it i is. mean you're not going to see it everywhere that's for yeah. sure and the character himself uh, uh, you know, he's Earth One and he's been used throughout. Uh, he's got like so many appearances. You mm -hmm. should check it out. He's got literally, uh, I would say it in the dozens, if not mm -hmm. way more than it goes right up to, uh, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, the theme of this episode is like intriguing, like not the ordinary kind of same old, same cool. old day stuff here. Yeah. We're getting some different stuff here going, guys. Cool. That's yeah. pretty damn good, man. Cool pickup, man. Very, very, very cool. interesting. Thanks, hey Mike. That's a great book, and for like, like say, fifteen, you can't go wrong. A five yeah. and a ten, huh? Mm. Cool. Okay, so yeah, when I saw this, I really couldn't say no. Again, went to the Toronto Comic Book Show looking for comic books, came away with signatures, and this is an original Daisy Ridley autograph. Now, uh, Daisy Ridley, when she does a show. She usually charges a hundred dollars for an autograph. I believe that's wow, the price. Wow, a Cino. Yeah. Damn. So, so I got Girl. this. I got this one. Again, authentic signature. It's got this, you know, the, the stamp of authenticity on the back of it. The guy's a reputable dealer. And I got this, and I got the John Boyoga, Bo, uh, Boyega signature. The pair uh, for um, 110. So that's what I paid for the two of them. That's not bad. Yeah. And I can cross off two more. Uh, Star Wars signatures from my uh, my list and Actually, uh, yeah. I walked by and I saw that on the table, but I didn't want to ask because I don't want to spend half of my mm -hmm. comic book allowance uh, allowance yeah. on that. But I really love it. Yeah. I am so jealous, dude. Yeah, I I was almost tempted. I, I almost <laughs> shit. Where's Paul? He's not even here yet. <laughs> yeah. I, I almost picked this up, but I yeah. didn't. So, he, so his signature, he was asking 80 for Daisy and 50 for John, wow. so 130 for the pair. And he gave them to me for 100, 110, 110, so. Took 20 bucks off, that's not bad. Any money you can sweet. get off of that. Yeah, and then yeah. He's got a built-in thing uh, as far as probably his cost base for whatever he paid for the signature. So, yeah. I mean, he's got to make a, you got to allow him a little kind of yeah, little yeah. kind of profit meat on the bone. Yeah. So, yeah, for that price, it's pretty good pickups, I will say. Cool. 
Okay, next up we got Mike Rock. I love those 10 cent covers. Yeah, I just lo I get really excited whenever one of you guys shows one. Yeah, they don't come around very often because they're going to be pricey sometimes. But if you play your cards right and you're not looking for a key, willing to accept a little bit of this and that, yeah. you can get it for a very reasonable price. Yeah. Oh, and that's more than reasonable, man. And you're that is right. more than reasonable. Yes, you're, you're right. Absolutely right. When I saw the price, I couldn't believe it. I mm -hmm. looked very closely at the book. It does even have a message that says "Rusty Staples." I looked mm -hmm. at the staples in the side. Well, yes, you can scrape off the rust from the outside. Yeah. I don't know what kind of damage is on the inside. I haven't opened. You have to look at yet. that because the rust, if it migrates from the if staple to the, to the paper, paper it'll paper, stain it. Yeah. That would mean that it's probably a full grade lower than what I'm giving it just by aesthetic. And mm -hmm. you're thinking what? Four I'm five? Thinking, I'm thinking about a four five of VG plus. Twenty five for a four five, and that's Canadian. That's I mean, twenty it's, bucks it's US for a ten cent crusty. cover. It's mm -hmm. got its crustiness and stuff like that. The overall image is great. It's a fantastic image. It presents too. very well. Oh, presents very presents well. Extremely well. Great eye appeal. For October 1960, Kurt Swan and the writers Jerry Siegel in the story. Uh, in the story, so mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not even. You know, I, I have to open it up mm -hmm. just to see if that migration is there. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm going to read it. That looks like a bat. That looks like a bat cave acquisition. No, it, that is a big B. Was it a big B? Big oh. big, big B. B. Hmm. Big B helped cool. me out on this one this time and uh, shout out to them and absolutely 20 bucks for a 10 cent cover i should have uh, i, I should have snagged man. that i you can't yeah, go I wrong just, it was like the they had a few that were there that were 25 bucks but uh, trust me they yeah. were really had chunks yeah missing yeah and really gross yeah it was a nice looking cover it presents very well for grade, and that's what you're looking at i mean there's nothing wrong with going down the grading scale and really buying the grade, as I say, a four or five can be a good looking book. It's mm -hmm. just you have to allow for certain things. What are you particular about as far as blemishes or flaws mm -hmm. or condition issues are you willing to live with? Some people might hate having rusty uh, yeah. staples. Somebody, if you know, otherwise everything seems, everything being equal, well, mm -hmm. if you can live with you that, you can it, get right? a 10 cent cover for yeah. 20, 25 bucks. Wow. Yeah. But like you say, buy the cover, buy the cover. That's what I did. Well, buy the book. Fantastic! That that that's that's an amazing for 20, 20 bucks. U.S. You, you, like, you yeah. can't go or wrong. For fifth, yeah. Uh, yeah. ten cent cover, I had to mm -hmm. have it for that price. Are you kidding? Limited budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're all kind of on the and cheap. Well, we were all we're sort of on, on the, the cheap. cheap yeah. this weekend, but mm -hmm. why not? And we got some great. We're all happy. Cool, cool, great book, Mike. Thanks for bringing it in. Yes, yes. Okay, so Jose, high end Jose, is bringing it home tonight. And he's got a very special book. Uh, this one's going back a while. Another really nice 10 cent cover. Wow, Jose. Yeah. Star Spangled War Stories, issue number 85 from September of 59. Key book, why? Second appearance of that French battle doll, Mademoiselle Marie. Wow. Now, war comic genre was an industry unto itself in the 1950s and 60s. Every major comic publisher had war titles. Yep. Charlton, Atlas, Fawcett. Dell, they all and all the others, they drew heavily on the great adventure stories that could be set against the very recently won Second World War, the noble war that defined a generation. Mm -hmm. By the late 1950s, DC Comics was the head and shoulders leader of the pack, with five popular titles selling each month. Yeah. All American Men of War, GI Combat, Our Army at War. Our fighting forces and this one, Star Spangled War Stories, were the envy of the industry. Now, of the hundreds of characters that come out of the war comic genre, one has emerged as the definitive female heroine, and that, of course, is Mademoiselle Marie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was a French farm girl who joined the resistance to fight the Nazis during World War II, often alongside who other than Sergeant Rock. Her mm -hmm. father died in her arms on the first mission, and he left her in command of the local resistance movement. Now, her first appearance in issue number 84, previous issue, is very elusive and scarce, especially in grades above a 6.0 fine, and because it sells to multiple groups. It sells to DC War fans, it sells to Good Galark fans, it sells to Key Issue fans. 
any copies of Star Spangled War Stories 84 sell immediately, even if they're priced aggressively. Mm -hmm. The book's demand far, far away the supply, basic economics. There don't seem to be any cheap copies floating around anymore, so the party's over on that, boys and girls, and the cheapest and ugliest seem to start around $200 US, and they go up from there. So, second appearance. Nice. Now, the character was created by writer Robert Kniger and artist Jerry Grandinetti. Uh, she was apparently based on part on several members of the French Resistance, most notably Simone Seguin. Her red beret wearing character is notable as being the only love interest of Sergeant Rock. Mm -hmm. Now, interestingly enough, I checked, there are only 10 copies graded higher than a 6.5 fine plus on the CTC census currently, with a single best graded copy at a full 9.4 mint. Now, of course, I should mention that there are only a scant is a number of issues in the census, about three dozen, and so this could potentially be a CGC support submission for me. Mm -hmm. I consider myself lucky to have picked up this comic grade. It's about a, a mid-grade copy, lower mid-grade, maybe a very good fine 5.0, paid $75 Canadian, which is about a little under $60 US currently. Yeah. The 48th Overstreet price breaks for this book are 87, 209, 467, and $725 US in the 6, 8, 9, and 9.2 grade splits. Wow, that is fantastic. And as you said, just to reiterate, this is a se this is the second appearance, appearance of Mademoiselle Marie. Yeah, first yeah. appearance, Star Spangled War Stories, issue 84. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can see it sending this one out to get slabbed. I mean, I I think it's worth it. And yeah. I think it's going to come back, you said, around a six, six no, and a half? I said five. Yeah. So it pressed maybe five and a half. Yeah. I think it's a, you know, a lower mid-grade copy. I, I did a quick once over. There's nothing major to say other than it's a pretty decent, good, yeah. lower yeah. mid-grade yeah. copy. Yeah. And take your time looking around for these because someone had uh, mistook that at Brave and the Bold because the banner looks almost identical. <laughs> and it's like, at a glance, no, take your time, look around. This is yeah. a different series altogether. Right? <laughs> yeah. Anyways, that's a fantastic book, and I can't think of any better way to end the episode than to show something like this, which is really spectacular. I'm jealous, Jose. Uh, we went out on a bang. Two Tencent issues in this episode. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Not, nice. Doesn't yeah. happen every day. And yeah. for our under C note Canadian, come yeah. on. We did quite well. It, like I said, I was alias Frugal McDougal in this mm -hmm. episode. Same here. Yeah, yeah. And another uh, Toronto comic book show has come and gone. Yeah. So, guys, if you like um, if you like what you saw, leave the comments because we like reading. I'm sorry we're not going to get these episodes up as, as often as we used to, but some of us are working weekends now, which can make it a little bit more difficult mm -hmm. to do the filming. But yes. we're going to be here when we can, and hopefully we'll bring some really cool, and we're definitely going to bring some really cool books. So, uh, guys, see you next time. Hoy hoy and happy hunting. Special guest Mike, yes, yes. The Death Star plans are not in the main computer.